Hi, I'm Angela Walters. I'm so excited. This is the very first lesson in our free motion challenge quilting along where we're going to master feathers, echoing lines and fillers to help highlight or hide our feather designs. In this lesson, we're going to tackle the basic feather. Although I feel like a basic feather is kind of derogatory, right? I don't know. We could call it the no backtrack feather. Doesn't really have a good ring to it. The Amazing feather, oh, might be overselling it. Let's just call it a great place to start for learning feathers. The great thing about it doesn't have any backtracking. It channels a basic shape that we're all familiar with. You'll learn why I like to use wavy rulers and it's not just for quilting wavy lines. And I'll help you avoid some of the common mistakes that quilters make when quilting the feather. I'll be using this glide thread, this gold color, so you can really see what I'm doing here. So if you happen to get that color, either in the Aurifil or the glide, go ahead and use it for this area. Or if you just have one all over color, heck, just go for it. It's going to be fine. All right, I've got my thread. I've got my quilt. I've got my machine, Supreme slider. I think I'm ready to go. Let's get to quilting. First thing we're going to do is practice on a regular piece of fabric. I want you to be able to see exactly how this design goes together. So I have my wavy rulers here. What I'm going to do is use it to help me create my spine or my stem. For beginners, it might be easier to do a more subtle wave, or if you want a little more advanced, you can try the wavier waves, but we're going to go with the wave A ruler. So I'm going to place it on here and I'm just going to draw my spine. Now the number one problem that quilters have is we don't always make our feathers big enough. So what we're going to do is line our ruler up here a couple inches away, and that's going to help give us a guideline for where to extend our petals to. So here I've just done a really rough dash line. And so this would be the spine and this is gonna be what we're gonna to use to help bring our feathers to. I'm gonna start by quilting along the spine and that's gonna act as the center of our feather. This blue line that we marked is only a guideline. If it doesn't fall perfectly on that line, don't worry, because once we erase it, you're not even gonna be able to see it anymore. When you quilt your petals, I want you to imagine a half heart shape, scoops out towards the edge and then back in. And the most important part is we really want that line to look like it's merging into the spine. I'm going to go out, put my petal and scoop it back in because that's what's going to give me room to fit the next petal. Once I touch the spine, I'm going to travel down just a little bit and then come right back up the way I went arcing out to that line. If I don't hit it, that's fine. If I go past it, it's fine. I just want to get close to it and then bring it right back down, just like a heart. Scooping it in until it merges with that line. And I'm going to keep repeating my way down here. What's so nice about making those markings or those registration lines is it gives us one less thing to think about. We can just focus on quilting our half heart shapes and filling in the area. For the panel, we're going to quilt our feathers in these large swirls right here. We're going to use the edge of it as our spine, and then we're going to quilt our petals filling in that space. So I'm going to travel along the edge of my swirl until I get to the top. And then I'm going to start quilting my half heart shaped petals. They're going to start out smaller and get bigger as I work my way around. And even though we're working our way around a swirl, it's going to be the same concept. We're quilting our shape, merging it into the line, traveling down, and then adding our next one. Really extending those petals out where it's close or touching the edge of the opposite side of the swirl. Stopping when I'm touching the spine, making sure my line looks like it's merging, traveling down just a bit and then quilting our next petal. Working my way down to the spine. Now, once you get to the point where there's only gold left of your original swirl, you have a choice. You can quilt little tiny petals or you can just add some more echo lines
And there we have the first part of our feather and our swirl. Isn't that cute? So to move on to the next one, I'm gonna to come to this point. I'm gonna add any quilting in this paisley if I want. And I'm gonna travel along the edge of my next swirl and repeat. So what did you think? Hopefully you're excited to learn feathers. You're excited to put it on your quilt. Now, if you're quilting along with me on the panel, go ahead and repeat that across one whole row of your swirls. Now you can see I've only done a couple. That's because I'm gonna do the same thing on a long arm machine. So I know some of you taking the challenge are doing this on a long arm. So I'm gonna try to incorporate little bits of me quilting the design on the long arm as well as the sewing machine. I'll be back next week where we'll quilt the next row of swirls with a more custom kind of feather that includes just a little bit of traveling. No worries, right? It's fine. And if you want more information about where to find the quilting diagrams for this or just questions about the challenge in general, check out the description box below. It's down there, it has all the information that you need. And I'll have instructions how to mark out your piece of fabric. It won't look exactly the same, but you'll still have fun learning the designs. I'll see you next week. Happy quilting.